Hello everyone. Before we begin today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're working on, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to elders past, present and future. Welcome and thank you for joining us at this Australian Indigenous Health Infonet and Heart Foundation Western Australia webinar about heart health for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people during COVID-19. My name is Miranda Poynton and I'm a Senior Research Officer at the Australian Indigenous Health Infonet, which is located at Edith Cowan University's Mount Lawley campus in Western Australia. I'd now like to invite our guest presenters from the Heart Foundation WA to join me on screen. I welcome Sarah Fordham, Shelley McRae, and Sandy Duxbury. Hello, everyone. I'll now tell you a bit about our presenters. Sarah Fordham is the CEO of the Heart Foundation WA. Prior to this, she worked for global and multinational companies such as Qantas, Shell and Alcoa in community partnerships, philanthropic grants, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander engagement, branding and marketing. Her not-for-profit experience includes being State Manager for Make-A-Wish for Western Australia, South Australia and Development Manager at Telethon Kids. Welcome, Sarah. Shelley McRae is Heart Health Manager at the Heart Foundation WA. And Shelley has worked at the Heart Foundation for over 10 years, where she's been engaging with clinicians to support the delivery of best practice cardiovascular care, advocated for access to best practice cardiovascular care, and promoted heart health. Prior to this, Shelley worked for eight years at, as Cardiac Rehabilitation Coordinator at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital, and her previous nursing background included coronary care and intensive care. Welcome, Shelley. Sandy Duxbury is a heart health coordinator for the Heart Foundation in WA with a special interest in nutrition and equity. Sandy's background includes the Heart Foundation's walking program, nutrition and health promotion within local government, as well as physical activity within private practice. Welcome, welcome Sandy. I will now hand over to Sarah Fordham, CEO of Heart Foundation WA to commence this webinar about heart health for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people during COVID-19. Thank you, Miranda, and happy National Reconciliation Week to everyone in their homes, in their offices, or wherever you may be working. I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners on the many lands that we meet and to elders past, present and emerging. As Miranda said, I'm the CEO of the Heart Foundation in Western Australia. Our organisation has been going for 60 years and in those 60 years, never have we seen a pandemic like COVID-19. From what we have learnt from our colleagues overseas, vulnerable communities such as Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander populations and those with pre-existing conditions like cardiovascular disease are more at risk of complications or death with COVID-19. Some of your organisations and our local governments have put out fantastic resources about COVID-19 for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and the health population. The Heart Foundation doesn't wish to duplicate any of those resources, rather be a point of contact to add value. And on that note, I'll hand over to my colleague, Sandy Duxbury. Thanks, Sarah, for joining us at the beginning of this webinar today. As COVID-19 has developed, we know that people with heart disease appear to be more vulnerable to severe outcomes of the virus compared to the general population. New evidence is rapidly emerging. However, research is showing people with heart disease infected with COVID-19 are at a higher risk of experiencing severe illness, being admitted to intensive care and dying. Early reports and experience with other viruses suggest that COVID-19 could present a higher risk if you already have heart failure, high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, heart valve disease, or abnormal heart rhythms. 
information about the effects of COVID-19 on the heart is rapidly changing. But inter international reports are indicating that COVID-19 infection is also resulting in heart problems, including injury and damage to the heart muscle and abnormal heart rhythms. As the COVID-19 pandemic increases uncertainty, anxiety and isolation for many, the Heart Foundation wants to extend support to our at-risk cardiovascular disease populations, including Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. A campaign was created a couple of weeks ago to help Australians take positive steps in how to look after their hearts. The Heart Foundation wants to provide credible advice on how to continue to look after your heart health in these challenging times. Pictured here is Professor Gary Jennings, who's a cardiologist and the Heart Foundation's Chief Medical Advisor. And Gary spoke about following simple steps to help stay safe during COVID-19. And you can find this on our website. Our consumer advice shared during our campaign involved washing hands often using soap and water, covering your coughs and sneezes with your elbow or a tissue and then washing your hands if you're able to afterwards, using alcohol-based sanitizers, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth, and practicing physical distancing to limit close contact with others. We also recommend avoid sharing drinks and foods and not sharing cups and water bottles not smoking or sharing smokes with other people and getting a flu shot to help protect yourself and your family from the flu. Practice physical distancing to avoid large crowds or gatherings such as funerals. Not travelling to places in your community or other communities unless you really need to. Staying at home and stay away from other people as much as you can. And if you are around other people, try to take two big steps as distance away from them. Continue to take any medicines that you already use. And this way you'll continue to stay as healthy as possible. The COVID-19 pandemic is disrupting many aspects of our daily lives and routines. Isolation at home and other physical distancing measures can make it harder to start and to keep our healthy habits. Physical activity is good medicine. It can help reduce heart disease risk factors such as high blood pressure and cholesterol. If you have heart disease already, physical activity will help you to continue to manage the condition. And when it comes to being active, our message is still the same. We recommend that we all aim to do 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity of physical activity each week. So this means about 20 minutes a day. Moderate forms of activity would include things like walking where you can still talk and hold a conversation. It might mean raking leaves in the backyard or doing some sweeping. And vigorous is something where you start to pant or you're, you're elevating your heart rate. So it might be you're dancing or it might be going for a jog. We also recommend muscle strengthening activities on at least two days per week. Because being active at these levels can help reduce the risk of heart disease by up to 35%, as well as boosting our general and our mental health. And while there's no existing research on exercise and people with COVID-19 currently, we do know that moderate physical activity, for instance, like walking, which uses major muscle groups, can improve your general health and your quality of life. If you are not able to leave your home easily for exercise, we have a great resource on our website that you can download. Our Exercises to Do at Home poster is a free download that covers a range of exercise tips and ideas, and it's suitable for all fitness levels. Easy to follow instructions for the exercises that you can do at home, perhaps in your garden, and they include a great warm up and cool down. If you attended supervised exercise programs before COVID-19, remember to stay in touch with your healthcare worker. Many suspended programs are able to offer support to do exercise safely in your own home 
as well as telehealth. Some other ideas to keep active include doing laps around your yard, uh, dancing while you're listening to music, using baked bean cans perhaps to lift as weights, uh, going up and down a hill or a step, and remembering that going for walks can be a great way to connect to country. Remember to keep at least two big steps away from your walking buddy. Keep connected with family and friends over the phone or online, and it's important to stay connected um, and you can do this while even walking. Doing things you enjoy like art, dance, or listening to music and being outdoors can also help you keep feeling good. Try to make activity part of your regular routine in your day. During COVID-19, our normal routines are interrupted and this can be a challenge for our eating as well. If you have access to a variety and choice of foods, try to follow a heart healthy eating pattern. And this includes things like eating plenty of vegetables, fruits and whole grains. Um, so fill up your plate, try for the colours of the rainbow and go for lots of variety. Include a variety of healthy protein rich foods. Don't forget about eggs. They're a great little snack to also take with you on the go. Choose unflavoured milk, yogurts and cheeses. And try and include healthy fats such as avocados, nuts and seeds, and olive oil. Replace the salt with some dried herbs and spices. So they're a really easy way to plump up foods um, with the flavour instead of your salt. And plan for healthy snacks when you're out. So instead of the go-to of biscuits and maybe lollies and chips and bakery items, um, go for a handful of popcorn, um, cut up some veggie sticks or some fruit ahead of, your, ahead of the week and store it in the fridge. Maybe the community that you're living in at the moment has a disrupted supply of your normal foods and fresh foods. We understand that having a reliable access to affordable, fresh and healthy food and groceries is not always available to everyone, and particularly if you're living in a remote community. If your food choice is limited, remember that following a heart healthy eating pattern can still include frozen, canned and dried items. And these may include your canned and frozen vegetables. So just remembering to look for your salt reduced varieties, canned and dried legumes such as beans, chickpeas and lentils. Not only does it make a salad interesting, but it also can really plump up the protein value and make you feel fuller for longer. Your pasta, rice and oats. So they're long lasting and you can add them to stews, um, maybe even smoothies and porridge, really nice in the morning. Canned fish, including tuna, salmon and sardines. Easy to have and maybe you've got some crackers in the pantry that you could add to and your unflavoured long life milk. So remembering milk powder, it's a really nice go-to to have in the pantry. Unsalted nuts and seeds, and dried herbs and spices. So again, just adding different flavours to soups. If food delivery is an option, try to plan and make a list of the items that you need for meals um, to give to someone to actually get for you. Or if you're going, it'll actually help reduce the time that you're spending in supermarkets. And you can discover some heart healthy recipes on our website for more ideas. I'd like to hand you over to Shelley McRae. Shelley is our heart health manager here in WA, and she'll continue to talk about how you can keep your heart healthy. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you to the Australian Indigenous Health Infonet for inviting the Heart Foundation to share this information. So in addition to looking after yourself by eating healthy food and keeping up the exercise and not smoking, um, taking precautions to reduce the spread of COVID-19, there are some other important things that I'd like to talk about. And the first one relates to medicines. There have been reports in the news that some blood pressure medicines or medications may increase the risks associated with COVID-19. These blood pressure medicines fall into a group of medicines called ACE inhibitors 
and ARBs. So many people have been asking the question, should I stop taking some of these? Well, there's no good data to confirm this recent speculation. So at this stage, our advice is for people to continue taking all of their medicines, including the type of blood pressure medicines that are in question. The other issue is around accessing medicines. While some restrictions on activities are being lifted, the advice is that vulnerable people should continue to stay home unless absolutely necessary. And this does include Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 50 and over with a chronic condition. So we encourage people to talk to their pharmacist about new home medicine delivery options available for people with heart disease and other chronic diseases. You can actually order prescription medicines over the phone and have them delivered to your home. Some pharmacies actually use um, Australian Post to deliver medicines now. The other important thing that we want to encourage is for people to stay connected with their doctor and their healthcare team. To minimise exposure to COVID-19, the Australian government has introduced a Medicare subsidy for telehealth services with doctors and allied health professionals. This means that consultations can be conducted via video conference or telephone. People who are vulnerable do need to stay home, but it's equally important that they continue to maintain contact with their GP and their healthcare team their healthcare workers, particularly if they have a chronic condition such as heart disease. It's simply a matter of phoning ahead to the doctor or clinic to find out what kind of services are available. One of the other concerns that has come out of the COVID-19 pandemic is that people in emergency situations might be avoiding going to hospital for fear of being exposed to the virus. This is the last thing that we want people to do, especially if they're having a heart attack or any kind of medical emergency that requires urgent treatment. We want people to be reassured that going to hospital is a priority and that many precautions in the hospital setting are taken to separate patients with suspected COVID-19 and those who are not. It is important that if someone is experiencing symptoms of their heart condition or if those symptoms become severe or get worse very quickly, that they call triple zero immediately. And just as a reminder, we do have action plans to explain the symptoms of heart attack and what people should do if they are experiencing symptoms of heart attack. These action plans are available from the Heart Foundation. They come in fridge magnets. The flu shot, as Sandy mentioned earlier, is vitally important. We know that influenza every year kills many people and that Aboriginal people have a higher rate of mortality than non-Aboriginal Australians. Influenza can also trigger heart attacks. So the flu vaccine can help prevent influenza infection and prevent heart attacks. The crossover between win the winter influenza and the COVID-19 pandemic makes it even more important to get the flu vaccine as soon as possible. The Keep Our Mob Safe campaign reminds Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders to get their free flu vaccine as part of the National Immunisation Program. And there are many resources and reminders about this that can be found on the Australian Government's Department of Health website. There are many concerns about whether children and young adults with rheumatic heart disease are likely to get more unwell than other people if they develop COVID-19. Whilst the evidence is still emerging, we don't know, we do know that young people mostly experience quite mild symptoms when they get COVID-19. It is, however, still equally important to take precautions and do the things that you need to do to stop the coronavirus germ. And these are actually very similar to the things that you need to do to stop the strep germ associated with rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. And that includes doing the things that we've already mentioned washing your hands often and thoroughly, staying away from others if you're sick, staying away from others if they're sick, staying away from large crowds, keeping a distance of one and a half metres or two arms length, and if you cough or sneeze, to turn away, do it into your elbow and then wash your hands. And people with rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease do need to keep doing the things they should be doing to stay healthy. And that includes the regular bicillin injections, 
to keep looking out for signs of strep germs like skin sores or sore throat and get treatment if these happen, to keep looking out for signs of rheumatic fever like sore joints and go to the clinic if that happens and keep having their regular checkups. I do recommend that you visit the Rheumatic Heart Disease Australia website for much more information and some fabulous resources about rheumatic heart disease. Also, just by way of reminder, if you're looking for general heart health information for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, I do also recommend that you visit the St Vincent's Hospital and Heart Foundation Aboriginal Heart Health website. I put the link on the page there. There's lots of information that would be very helpful to many people. If you are looking for more detailed clinical information, there is a recent summary on the available data around COVID-19 and cardiovascular disease um, published in the MJA at the beginning of April. This was a collaborative piece by the Cardiac Society of Australia New Zealand and the Australian New Zealand Society of Cardiac and Thoracic Surgeons, the High Blood Pressure Research Council and the National Heart Foundation. The link is available on the page and we will share these with you separately. Additionally, there is an extensive list of consensus statements around the many aspects of cardiovascular care during COVID-19. This is published by the Cardiac Society of Australia and New Zealand. These are live updated documents and I recommend that you visit their website. We also recommend that you don't forget about the many other resources that are available, that are culturally appropriate and talk to the many aspects of living in a time when COVID-19 is upon us. The websites for the Australian Government's Department of Health, the Aboriginal Health and Medical Research Council, the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisations, their websites have a wealth of information, as does Health Direct, their website, and our state-based health departments and our state Aboriginal medical services all have fantastic resources around COVID-19. For specific information about cardiovascular disease and COVID-19, I would encourage you to visit our website or call the helpline on 13 11 12. And more specifically, we do have a health professional hub to keep health professionals up to date on the latest information around COVID-19 and cardiovascular disease. The link is on this page as well. And in conclusion, I would like to just say thank you again to the Australian Indigenous Health Infonet for the opportunity to share this information around cardiovascular disease and COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley and Sandy, for a fantastic presentation. Many of those heart messages are always relevant, but they take on a particular importance at a time like this. For those of you watching, if you have any questions about the topics covered by the presenters today, you can get in contact with them via the details on screen. The slides from this presentation will also be available as a downloadable PDF from the Health Infonet website and will include clickable links to some of the resources that Shelley and Sandy described. I'd like to mention the Health Infonet's own COVID-19 information and updates page. It collates many of those resources that Shelley described in her presentation. It also includes links to COVID-19 updates from agencies like the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation. And this page is accessible from the homepage of the Health Infonet website. I'd also like to share with you that the Health Infonet has a new publication, the Review of Cardiovascular Health Among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander People 2019. This review summarises the most up-to-date information about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cardiovascular health. And it's freely available for download along with a fact sheet and a video from the Health Infonet website. concludes our webinar. 
Thank you everyone for joining us at this Australian Indigenous Health Infonet and Heart Foundation WA webinar. And a special thank you again to our presenters, Sandy, Shelley and Sarah. A great presentation and I appreciate your time. You're more than welcome. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.